It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On Today covers the biggest stories from around the sports world in under 30 minutes. It will go down as one of the great playoff games of all time. Start your morning going beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with our local experts. Jimmy Garoppolo, you got to figure it out. There's no world where it's not better when you have Kyrie for any amount of games. No one's going to feel sorry for the Lakers. That is part of what makes this such a compelling story. Follow Locked On Today wherever you get podcasts. It's free and available on all platforms. Imagine that. You're listening to the Peacock and Williamson NFL Show, your daily podcast on the National Football League, powered by the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL Show. I hope everyone had a fantastic Thanksgiving as we record here on Friday morning, about to heat up some leftovers here after this podcast. We're going to cover everything that happened on Thursday. We got Bears, Lions, Raiders, Cowboys, Bills, Saints, trying to fit in everything from Sunday. We've got a preview and make picks for every single game on Sunday, and then we'll leave that Monday night football game for Monday as we break down everything we saw on this Monday week 12 action some really good games, Matt. I, we can't, we don't have time to go deep into our Thanksgivings, but I just want to know, did you have a bounty? Did you enjoy your food and your spread and your family and friends this holiday? Absolutely. Uh, as always, it was a good get together at my parents' house. Uh, the fridge is full today. Um, my wife made uh, dippy eggs and stuffing this morning. That was an interesting creation, but a, a home run. Mm. And there's so much pie floating around. I mean, there's a, 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 an exuberant amount of pie left over. I mean, there wasn't many people and we had five pies, I think. And, we had a pretty a good pies, crew think. together at my in-laws and they can cook and they own a, a Mexican restaurant in Visalia, mm. California. So I'm with the fam there in central California. And we had not only Turkey, but prime rib and yeah, pies galore and different cakes. So yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, awesome. I'm excited to hit that a second time today for sure. Oh yeah, no doubt. I wanted to go back to seconds last night and I couldn't, I was so full from the original. <laughs> that, that's surprising <laughs> that that's not something that usually happens. No, usually round two is maybe as good as round one. Uh, you know what? Unfortunately, we are going to get seconds of this season. We get every season. We get two Bears Lions games, and this was a pretty bad one Thursday, and not a great oh. start to the week. Um, and the Lions still winless, finding uh, a way to lose. There, it was a Cairo Santos field goal at the end that won it for the Bears, six to four. I missed that. It was a three point line. So if you bet the Lions side of the line, you still won that one, sixteen fourteen. Uh, Jared Goff, not a lot better than Tim Todd Boyle and Andy Dalton, not really better than Justin Fields, even in the things that Fields struggles in. It's like, well, you might as well have the rookie out there because it wasn't a lot better with the Andy Dalton led offense. It was 317 yards, but it didn't feel like a big output game, right? Yeah. Uh, real quick. I mean, I, I watched every snap of this game, hopped in the car, got to my parents' house just in time for the second game kickoff. That game, I had kids crawling over me, and we, you know, I went to and ate dinner. So I'm not as on top of that second game, which is probably the best game of the group. Mm -hmm. And then I came home and watched the third one on DVR by myself and my lazy boy, quite happy that no one was near me. Um, but this game was hard to watch. I mean, I really liked the over in this game. I thought the Lions might win it, and everything that started to get going seemed like it just got self-inflicted wounds you know a lot of lions penalties that were dr absolute drive killers uh, i think we have to mention the swift injury as well as a roquan smith injury right off the you know real early in this game first half injuries yes. and that and it was just a slog i mean it was a really tough watch it just seemed like everyone was playing poorly I think if there was a bright side the, and look at Jared Goff's line, I, this is what's funny. You look at this game and I came away thinking oh, I was ugly and nobody really played good. And you look at the lines and Andy Dalton's 317 yards. He had a touchdown yeah. and interception. Uh, Jared Goff's line is 21 to 25. It's perfectly efficient. The 121 rating, 170 yard, 171 yards and two touchdowns. I, I didn't feel like he was about to lead that team. They only scored 14 points. It was just like, if it wasn't one thing, it was the other. So if the quarterback had a good drive, somebody else was, having a bad drive and there was you know, somebody screwed at something up every time <laughs> yeah fumbles lost yeah. uh golf did lose a fumble um 
an interception. Yeah, it's just these teams can't get out of their own way, and that's just you know what a bad team does. And unfortunately for the Lions, they're a worse bad team than the Bears are. Yeah, exactly. I know we have to move on. We have a really packed show, but two of the rookies from last year, Cole Komet's really starting to establish himself as a like a fantasy force at tight end. That says a lot. And Darnell Mooney's just a flat out really good player. Love what I'm seeing from Darnell Mooney here. Yeah, yeah. another 123 yard effort, making big plays, averaging 25 yards a catch, had a 52 yarder. That was probably the play of the game for the Bears, and a nice throw from uh, Andy Dalton to hit him over the top. And so, uh, yeah. There, there's some good things to take away and for the Bears. You know, they're probably going to hang around, and it sounds like Matt Nagy's not going to get fired this season. That was the reports. It's not going to be an yeah. in-season firing, and, uh, you know, maybe if you lose to the Lions, that idea would have changed. But at 4-7, and seven, we talked about it, 15 teams in the NFC are going to be close enough to hang around for a while with seven playoff card playoff spots and uh, the wild cards and the 17-game the season. So they're, they're going to kind of be playing for something for a while, even though I think, Matt, you and I would, would bury them a Along with those lions in the NFC. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're, they're buried. The second game was the best game. I, I can't believe you. I, I mean, I know you're watching it and it was on, but this was, I mean, tw- <laughs> I don't, I don't even know where to start with this game. I guess I'll start with the penalties because that's what, that's where I was going to start. Uh, Mike McCarthy brought up after the game and uh, he was upset about it. 20, was it 24, 28 penalties or something like that? But you, you 28 can't... penalties for 276 penalty yards. And I get there's too there's too many and some of them are ticky tack and the, the deep the pass interference is the most difficult one to call in the NFL and it's really frustrating because there's such big plays those are massive calls when you get a, a defensive pass interference but it's not like the Cowboys weren't committing penalties and, and the way it ended too with jumping off sides like multiple times in a row at the, with the field goal attempt I don't were they coaching them up to do that it seemed like there was some arguing between um, the special teams coach on the sideline there with with McCarthy so I don't. It was it was it was a game that and again, maybe it's just the short week stuff and playing on a Thursday. But again, like what you can be mad about the penalties, but you committed a bunch of penalties, too. So instead of 28, would there have been 25, you know, or whatever? <laughs> right, right, right. Um, we just mentioned that we were burying the Bears. The Lions were buried months ago. I was ready to bury the Raiders. I, yep. I you know, there was three bets I felt strong about yesterday it was. Bills the cover, Cowboys the cover, and the over in the early ugly game. Luckily, I put the most money on the Bills, but I only won one of the three. And I give the Raiders credit. I mean, they lost Aaron Waller early in this game, and uh, that didn't look good. I don't know how bad that injury is, but we'll probably find out more over the weekend. Um, they controlled the football. They, they won the time possession battle by a major difference. And Carr, I thought, played quite well. They had a, a decent ground game going with Jacobs hit the big play to Jackson. I thought it was key that they got up early in this game. I mean, this game was 14, six going into the quarter and they, that was a key component, but it was a pretty equal game all in all. Yeah. And the reports disappointing the Cowboys, very disappointing. The Cowboys, the Cowboys defense, especially because yeah, Derek Carr torched them for 373 yards. It was only the one touchdown, the, the long one from Deshaun Jackson, but man, that element was really needed. So to see him on the field more, for the Raiders offense is, is really important there. Only had three catches, but was so impactful with that 56 yard touchdown catch. Uh, I don't, I mean, can they continue to lose players like with Darren Waller? And, and I mean, they're, they're staying afloat right. with everything they've gone through. I'm with you. We were ready to bury them. And um, I told the listeners last week when we were doing the predictions here, or what was that Wednesday? It feels like last week, it was two days ago. Um, when we were, pre- uh, when we were previewing this game Wednesday, I told the listeners, Hey, when I pick against the Raiders, they're going to win. So congratulations, <laughs> Raiders fans. It helped you out with that one, I think. Yeah, I think you got something to go in there. You might be getting some checks in the mails from the Vegas community in Oakland and that neighborhood. But they were able to go to the ground game. Josh Jacobs, it was, you know, four yards to carry, which is nice. You know, he wasn't it's blowing great. it up and making huge runs or anything like that, but they just kept pounding it with them. 22 carries there. Kendrick Drake got in with seven carries, and they said they wanted to make uh, more of an effort to, to have the ground game involved. And it's a lot easier when you get an early lead uh, and it worked for him. And I, I felt the whole game, like the Cowboys were going to come back and they finally did, but they were not able to hold on to it. And uh, couldn't get in the end zone at the end of the game. So 
it was a, an overtime game and couldn't get in the end zone in overtime, quick three and out. And it was the Raiders that won it with the field goal. So good job with the yeah. Raiders. And you can't bury them yet at six and five. I mean, it's a nice record and they, they're not going away. So credit to the, you know, everybody else who has stepped up with everything they've gone through this season. It's pretty impressive. Even if they, they do fall off at the end of the year. And I expect them to, even though it's six and five, they're in a nice spot still. They absolutely are. I think it's very impressive, the resiliency and where they're at. You, uh, another big obstacle, losing Waller, stick around for a long game, a lot of snaps, and still prevail. Um, last thing I got is Micah Parsons might not have to play another snap this year to be defensive rookie of the year. I mean, he's really something. I mean, he stands out every game I watch. Oh, absolutely. And a really big play at the end of that game, too. And um, he, I mean, he's just all over the place every week, and they use him in such yeah. different ways and another sack for him. How many sacks is that on the year for him? Because that's the thing I didn't really see coming was him being used as a, sort of a hybrid edge guy as well as being like a true off-ball linebacker because some some players come into the league and they're sort of tweener-ish and they don't really fit at both. And Parsons could do both at a high level, which is – that's what you want. You want the versatility, not the tweener who can't really do either great. I mean, he's, what nine sacks now on the year for him. It's crazy to see what he's doing. He's, he's a runaway. Yeah, you're right. I don't. He could stop close, playing yeah. today, and I think he's got the award already. I do too. And I, I, because I'm close to Penn state and I'm not a Penn state fan, I, I've, I've seen him a little bit before, you know, his draft stuff and, you know, he opted out last year too, but he came to Penn state as like a four or five star edge pass rusher. And then linebacker, you took him off the ball, you know, so he might be best as a Von Miller type. He actually kind of reminds me of Von Miller. Yeah, height, weight, speed wise, he is kind of yeah. fitting that way. He's actually a little bigger than Von Miller. Von Miller, by the way, is not looking huge. We'll get to Von Miller. We have, actually, no, we got to no. move on. We got to move on to some other games here, but disappointed in the Cowboys and those Raiders still showing something, showing life, which is which is pretty amazing for them. And uh, Derek Carr, you got you got to give a ton of credit to Derek Carr, who's clearly the leader of that football team and keeping them afloat right now. Yeah, without question. Bill's blowing out the Saints. Uh, do we bury the Saints now is the question here. The five and six Saints who now, after whoever wins between Vikings 49ers, which we'll get to next, they're going to be two games back of one of those teams for a wild card spot now. And 31 to six with the Bills over the Saints. The Saints barely put up a fight in this one, and they're missing so many players that you just can't overcome. That The quarterback situation is not great, and Taysom Hill's still not I, I don't. I don't, do not understand what the Taysom Hill situation is. Why is why why is he on the roster? Why is he getting extensions and getting paid the first time anyway? Like I don't. It's such an odd situation. But when you don't have yeah. Camara, you don't have Ramchek on offense and no weapons in the past. It's just it's it's an impossible task at this point, even for a great coach like Sean Payton. Yeah, they are so short, and the defense is always on the field. And Ramchek was out and. One of our listeners, Kay White, terrific. You know, he, he tweeted us. You know, that's, I think this is all we need to know for this game. First, it's a get right game for Buffalo. Allen throws back to back interceptions. I'm like, oh boy. And then, but other than that, he was yeah. great. And Stefan Diggs got involved. Um, but we have a lot to cover today. So I, this kind of sums up the Saints: quarterback, seventh rounder, running back, undrafted free agent, wide receivers are third rounders and undrafted free agents and undrafted free agents, tight end, undrafted free agents. One tackles a third round pick, the other's an undrafted free agent. One guards a first round pick, the other one undrafted free agent, and the center is a second round pick. Like we don't have anything. It's I mean, that's that's impossible. That's not good. That's you know, that's your your Lions Texans personnel basically on offense. Yeah. When right, you're when right. you're losing all of those players and that those are huge, awesome, impactful players that are not out there. Michael Thomas and Kamara and Ramchek and even Tron Armstead. Uh, is is one of those names you mentioned there, and he's uh, banged up. So, I mean, they kill for Troutman, you know. I mean, they don't right, like right, yeah, right. Troutman, even like just nothing. So, yeah, it might be time to bury those New Orleans Saints. Too much to overcome so. there, and uh, even uh, you know some of the good players they have on defense. Every week, it's Mar Marshawn Lattimore. Seems like he has a really nice matchup, and this was a super fun one with Stephon Diggs. And Stephon Diggs got him with just a nasty release in the. I mean, and it's hard sometimes when it's like that because you've got a two way go in the red zone, and Stephon Diggs is so good with his footwork, and he beat him for the touchdown there. But there was some good plays made by um, by Marshawn Lattimore on. Stephon Diggs in this game. So that was a really fun matchup to watch that in one-on-ones. I'd still worry a little bit. Josh Allen has, has 
sort of regressed it you know it's not i always talk about how quarterback developments and you know year to year it's not a linear path he he's not really building on what he did last year he sort of it regressed in some ways and making some mistakes too many mistakes maybe for josh allen at quarterback a couple interceptions in this game no running game aside from josh allen for the bills those two things do still worry me for buffalo going forward a hundred percent and not the challenge what you said there i don't know that allen's getting worse but I think that they are helping him much less. I mean, the running game is non-existent. He does have those Superman qualities where he's not going to Brady and check down it down the yeah. field, you know, like a, Mahomes. A huge A dot. Yeah, exactly. And just adds for a lot of variance And they're They're asking too much of him. And as talented as he is, uh, every quarterback's going to struggle like that or not be at their best. Um, I am burying the Saints. I really think, you know, Niners, Vikes that we're going to talk about, Eagles, Panthers are the other two that are I would put ahead of them in the NFC right now. I think you have to at this point with what we've seen recently and the, the Eagles beat them straight up. So let's get to those games and the Sunday action for week 12 next. No one plays daily fantasy sports to lose, right? Winning feels so much better, but traditional fantasy sports are a long term losing proposition because you never know who or what you're up against. Stat Hero is the first of its kind daily fantasy sports platform where it's you versus the house in head to head fantasy matchups, winner take all. And here's the crazy part Stat Hero shows you their lineups before you play, and you handpick the team you want to face one on one. This never before seen innovation of a fantasy sports and sports betting hybrid has Stat Hero players clocking odds that are over four times better. Why? Because you don't have to compete against thousands of experts or unknowns. Stat Hero puts you in control of your fate. With Stat Hero, you're in control of the stakes. You decide how much to play for. And Stat Hero has no choice but to take it because they're daring you to beat them. For example, can you beat a matchup of a running back pair of Najee Harris and Leonard Fournette? Pick two running backs and beat the house. How about a pair of wide receivers, Deontay Johnson and Terry McLaurin? Can you beat the house? by picking two other wide receivers at Stat Hero. And the best part, right now, sign up for free at stathero.com slash locked on. Use that promo code locked on for a 100% deposit match. Yes, 100% deposit match. Stathero.com slash locked on. That's promo code locked on for 100% deposit match. Again, stathero.com slash locked on. Don't forget it. That promo code is locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, this is Zach Blackerby with the Locked On Auburn podcast. With Locked On podcast, you are used to hearing us talk about your favorite local team. But how would you like to hear us talk about your business, helping you reach passionate local sports fans just like you? Unlike any other podcast, Locked On gives your company the unique ability to reach local podcast listeners, not just any podcast listener, a Locked On podcast listener. If your company wants to connect with local sports fans and a predominantly male audience that are well-educated with disposable income, then let's put your company right here on this Locked On podcast. Local fans love to support local businesses. Text the word advertising to 33777 or visit LockedOnPodcasts.com slash advertising and let us know who you are. Our team is here to help your team achieve Locked On advertising success. Once again, text the word advertising to 33777 or visit LockedOnPodcast.com slash advertising. We look forward to hearing from you. Here we go. The five and five Minnesota Vikings are at the five and five San Francisco 49ers. We're going to get into some tiebreakers in the NFC. We're going to have to talk about some of those things later. And Vikings are, um, I, I played with, 538.com has this really cool thing where they they give you playoff odds and and different odds for different teams and then you can click on okay if this team wins this game this team wins this game what does that do to the odds of these teams making the playoffs and a tie Mm -hmm. helps the vikings more than the 49ers because the vikings right now conference record is one of the tiebreakers and they have a better nfc record at four and two niners are four and four so uh, this is a huge game, not only head to head and for your overall record, but there's going to be tiebreakers in this NFC playoff picture with all the teams we're talking about that that have an opportunity to get in there unless a couple of teams run away with it. And the 49ers and Vikings, uh, the team that loses drops about 
I think the Niners, if they win, are a 60% chance of making the playoffs. And if they lose, are a 16% chance of making the playoffs. So that's that's how big this is essentially a playoff game, a borderline playoff game in week 12 with Vikings and 49ers. It should be a lot of fun to evenly match teams, both five and five. And the odds makers feel the same way because in a neutral site, this is a pick 'em. Niners at home favored by three. Yeah, this absolutely is a pick 'em to me. It might be my favorite game of the week. I mean, I know Rams Packers is more of a headliner, but this one might mean more in terms of who stays home and who doesn't. Both these teams are building momentum. I think both of them run the ball well. Uh, similar styles of quarterback. I, I'm taking the points. Uh, that, that's all I know. I'm not sure who I want, who I think is going to win, but I think it's going to be very, very close. And if I'm going to get three out of it or in that neighborhood, I want the points. Both these teams playing their best ball of the season so far right now, too, yeah, coming yeah. off of big wins. And um, the, the Vikings just beat the Packers. And the Niners just crushed the Rams on Monday Night Football, then came through and rolled across the country and, and beat the Jaguars in dominating fashion. So that's what's fun here. Evenly matched quarterbacks. Kirk Cousins, right? The guy that Kyle Shanahan coached before with the guy that Kyle Shanahan coached now. And, and very similar um, uh, statistics recently too for those two quarterbacks so a very evenly matched game here's where I think I would lean toward the 49ers but you're you're not wrong that I think the smart bet is probably take the points because they're so even and the Niners haven't proven that they have a huge home field advantage at Levi's Stadium in fact if they win this and make it two in a row at home would be the first time since they beat the uh the the Vikings in the playoffs <laughs> before the Super Bowl, the Vikings and the Packers back to back at home in the playoffs. So uh, they haven't I don't won know a lot if you know this and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but Shanahan's record at home as a favorite is really, really bad against the spread. You yes. know, kind of like what you're just saying. You know, I mean, it doesn't mean they always lose, but right. I don't know. That's kind of odd to me. And they've been some big favorites sometimes. So they still win yeah, and, and yeah, not yeah. cover that number. So three point, I would understand why you take the points here. Here's where I like it for the 49ers. I think def- defensively, their personnel is better. Um, I, by the way, 100%. watching Debo Samuel and Justin Jefferson in this game, a couple of great young receivers right now, and uh, they might both go over a thousand yards receiving in this game. So um, not not in the game, but for the year. Uh, yeah, that's that's going to be a fun one to watch, too. But with Everson Griffin and his situation, he's not going to be available for this game. And uh, Dalvin Tomlinson and COVID, like they are down multiple defensive linemen. The 49ers want to run the ball. If the Niners get an early lead, they're going to run, run, run. I don't think the I don't think the Vikings defense is going to be able to stop them. I think that really favors the 49ers. The Vikings need to get the kick, get the opening kickoff, win the coin toss, go score early. So the Niners can't go to the heavy run game. I think that's a huge key for this game. Mm. And, you know, then yeah. otherwise, you know how the ball bounces. And if, as long as Garoppolo doesn't throw the ball to Eric Kendricks and Harrison Smith, then uh, the Niners be in a good spot. So I think I, I, I might've picked the Niners straight up, but I, I don't think it's a bad bet to take the points. No, I am torn on it. I probably will not put money on this game and just sit back and really enjoy it. Let's get your Steelers out of the way here who are on the road to the Cincinnati Bengals and the Bengals are in a similar situation to the Raiders where there's so many teams jockeying for position in the AFC that you're close enough to where you could get the one seed and you're close enough to where you could be out of the playoffs. So we'll see how this AFC thing shakes out. I don't think the Bengals are going to be fighting for a one seed in the end. But, you know, if they go seven and four after beating the Steelers at home here, that'd be huge. And they're favored by four points at home. Yeah, I don't know who to pick in this game. I know I'm taking the points. And it's another one of those situations. I, I've thought about this to no end. Soon I have to go do my Steelers show, make my official prediction and a score and all that. And it's going to be 23-24. I just don't know who I'm picking to win yet. So I want the points. I think there's a lot of weapons in this game. You know, I mean, guys that will be touching the football that can make big plays. This is just kind of one of those games that Tomlin wins. And they've been stressing like crazy about how important this game is. You know how you get coach speak and sometimes coaches will be like, well, this is just as important as any other game. Tomlin hasn't even attempted to give people that line of BS. He's just like, (laughs) This is way important than any game we've played yet. We have to have it. This is AFC North football. There's no candy. I mean, he's like not lying. Um, is since he ready to be the, be the big brother? I don't know, but I'll, I'll take the points. Is Minka back? Minka will be back. Watt is back. 
Oh, that's Watts you. back too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I do like the points on this one then. Yes, yeah. Yes. With the with that Steelers defense. Yeah. Strength on strength there with the Bengals offense against the Steelers defense and signs of life from from Ben Roethlisberger recently. You know, I, I, I'm I'm okay with what I saw last week and getting the ball out of his hands Definitely and letting his playmakers his make plays. So yeah, give me uh give me the Steelers there and I'll take those four points. Yeah, I feel good about the points. I just don't know who's gonna win the game. Bucks Colts. I kind of like this matchup. The six and five Colts now trying to be involved there. There's so many teams involved in the AFC and the Bucks in the NFC looking pretty good now after a big win on Monday Night Football. They're at seven and three on the road at Indy. Uh, Bucks only favored by three points in this game. I thought it might be a bigger line. Here's I'll start here, which is why I really like the Bucks in this game because I think what they can do with having Vita, Vita Vea in the middle there and just strength on strength again like we talked about with the last game but Jonathan Taylor you know he's been amazing offensive player of the year probably in the NFL right now with what he's been doing especially five touchdowns last week which didn't help me win my fantasy football matchup but that's another story <laughs> um <laughs> but the Bucks can stop the run they, you know that running into the strength of that Buccaneers defense there and if you make Carson Wentz throw a bunch of times and then take the ball away get some of those picks I, I like that for the Bucks so I'm gonna on the road give up those three points for the Buccaneers yeah, I am gladly, and I'm not saying the Colts are overrated, but I feel like you're kind of selling their stock high right now. I mean, Taylor's awesome; he's wonderful, but is he? He's not going to be the best player in the league, you know? I mean, you know, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it just seems like the that roller coaster is really, really at its peak right now. And I like where the Colts are at. I just think that the public is overrating them a little. This should be a five point line to me. I mean, this is a Super Bowl champs, Brady in a dome, uh, good run mm-hmm. defense. I just think the Bucs are the clearly better team right now and that the the world might be getting a little ahead of themselves on the Colts. Yeah, style makes fights and I know the Colts are playing much better ball than they were at the beginning of the season, but I think this style really favors the Buccaneers. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to, I, I don't know if you've watched the new Hard Knocks, the in-season in Hard Knocks. And, I have not. There's been two episodes and they're, they're totally up to date. The latest episode was them going to Buffalo and winning. So, I mean, like, it's not like there's any catch up, but they got so up for that game. And I don't want to overreact to an HBO show, but you know, (laughs) it was a big win it for Frank Wright going home. He's had, Mm -hmm. he was having dinner with Bruce Smith and it was all these Buffalo connections for the head coach. And it's just hard to stay up like that two weeks in a row. Yeah, no, that that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough to do that in the NFL. You're absolutely right. I can. Here's here's a good one. Can the Panthers under Cam recapture what they need this season? Get back to 500. If they win this game at five and six, they beat six and six. And in that conversation, I think much. Uh, I think I, I would definitely like them ahead of the Eagles. We talked about this when we were looking at the NFC playoff picture last week, uh, and the Saints in the NFC, but they've got to win this one. This is a huge game. Another really important must win for the Panthers on the road at Miami at the four and seven dolphins. The Panthers got to win this one. They got to prove that they are ready and for real with Cam Newton and he's ready to go. They're favored by two on the road. Both these teams look a lot better to me than they did a month ago. You know I mean? I think the arrow is pointing up on both. I trust Carolina's D more than I do any other unit here. And I think Cam's getting comfortable, and but two is playing fine. I mean, um, I'll I'll lay the two on the road. Are we taking the under on this game? The over under is pretty low; it's forty two. But I feel like this yeah. could be real slugfest. And and um, and Carolina's two points. I think I will give up those two points. Although you know, home dog in an, in an under game feels like it's a better bet. But I just feel you know more confident if there's a lot of points put up, it would be on the Panthers side more so than the Dolphins side. So I, I, I might go under if I was really going to bet something on this game. And uh, I really like the direction the Panthers are going. They weren't able to do it last week against Washington. But I think this is the week that we start to see that Cam Panthers and they've got some momentum going. But the Dolphins are also playing much better ball. I'm kind of talking myself into taking the points for the Dolphins actually at home in this one because I do like the way the Dolphins are playing right now. I think Tua has been somewhat disrespected uh, this season and he might have a little bit of, a, um, you know, playing for his football career in his you yeah, know, next yeah. team you know he's he's putting some some film out there which which i like but too many weapons on the offensive side for the panthers more complete team give me give me carolina and, and i'll give up those two points yeah i'm not sure i'm betting this one either i like your under call though 
How about the Titans at Patriots? Here we go. We talked to Mike debate of Locked on Patriots one. earlier in the week. You like one of the sides on this one? Uh, the seven points is a lot of points here because I think this one will be close. So I want to take the points, but I don't like taking a team on the road against Bill Belichick and the way this New England Patriots team is playing. But man, this could be one of those under games, not a lot of points. And if that's the case, then, you know, seven points is just too much for me. I'm going to take the points with the Titans on this one. Uh and I can't wait to watch this game. It's going to be a lot of fun and familiarity with those coaches and trying to play a similar style of ball. Who can do it better? And so far, um, with, with what I've seen recently, I just feel like the Patriots might be able to do that better. But seven points in a low-scoring game, ah, give me the Titans. Makes perfect sense, but I'm betting the, I'm betting the Pats on this one. Mm-hmm. I think they're the much – I don't say much more. The more physical team, and I could see this thing staying close – but I think the fourth quarter in New England belongs to the Patriots and you're just seeing Stevenson and Harris mm-hmm. breaking off six yards, a chunk in a Derek Hen- Henry like fashion, you know, I mean, doing the, the Titans, what the Titans do to others when their big guy is there. I, I think Tannehill, I don't say he's come back to earth, but he's really suffered without Henry. There's not much of a play action game. You know, he's having to elevate those around him. Julio's still out. I like the Patriots to win this thing by about 10 or so. And a lot of it late scoring. I'm looking for the latest on AJ Brown here. And yeah. I'm trying I, to find out if I he's going to play. He's playing, right. But I'm a positive. On yeah. That that's, either. that's what it looks like. He's, I think he's still not practicing and x-rays negative mm-hmm. on his ribs. So I'm counting on him to play, but it's probably a game time decision or did something. not practice Wednesday. Yeah. I mean, it looked really bad for Tennessee last week with the, with such a lack of, of weapons on offense. And in that case, and there was just the way the Patriots, again, there's another game. The more I, I look at the line and I, I feel one way about it, and the more I talk about it, and, and you're almost convincing me to go the other way. I think I'm still going to take those seven points, but um, I feel like New England's got this one straight up. I, Yeah, I feel less confident <laughs> now that I talk about it. Um, that, I feel like the Patriots are going to come back to earth a little bit, though. Right? I do, too. I think people are getting a little too excited about the Patriots. But um, I mean, seven points, they're, they're favored right by now. seven points over an eight and three team. You know, That's, it feels like a lot. No, um, I, I hear what you're saying. And again, if it is a low scoring run, heavy slugfest, seven's a lot. The New York Giants is a team we have buried. They are at three and seven hosting the Philadelphia Eagles, who I thought we were going to bury. And we did not because of a huge win over the Saints last week, a team they are leapfrogging now in the NFC playoff scene. Uh, Just like the Carolina Panthers, these teams got to win. These teams got to get over that 500 hump and really compete with uh, the other teams that they're trying to battle for those playoff spots at five and six. The Eagles have a good opportunity to get back to 500 here. I like them. They're favored by three and a half on the road. I think I don't have a problem giving up those three and a half points with the way they've been playing recently. Although uh, that little voice in the back of my head says, Peacock, what are you doing? The home dog here, the New York Giants are going to knock the Eagles, a familiar foe out of the playoffs this week. Yeah, part of me is going, Williamson, you sure you trust the Eagles? You're going to pick the Eagles here, and I know it's, you're buying it, but they're, they they might be just setting you up for the big, you know, fail here. Yeah. I like how they're playing, though. I mean, the, everything's all about the run game, almost in like a Ravens-like fashion with a really good O-line. Yeah. Their defense is good enough. The Giants are struggling. New offensive coordinator, is that good or bad? I'm not sure. Probably not great. Of course, the Giants have a couple injuries and questionable dudes, Shepard and Tony and those guys. I'm going to lay the points cautiously. And they've they've handled recently everybody. The last four weeks, they, they yeah. lost one of those games, and it was a three-point game to the Chargers, who I think are a much better team. And then they blew out the Lions on the road. Uh, they blew out the the Broncos and, and yeah, really yeah. kind of blew out the Saints. Like They put 40 points up on the Saints last week. So they found their identity, and, and I think that's one of the huge keys. You know, new coaching staff there trying to figure out how to win football games, and you mentioned it. That's It's very it's turned very much into a Ravens style of offense there for the Eagles. And as long as, you know, they, they get Daniel Jones to throw them a a football or two, which he does every single week. It seems like they'll be good in this one. And yeah, so yeah, I feel better about this one now. Good. You, you talked me more into it than out of it this time. Thanks, Matt. Uh, nope, yeah, let's, nope. let's give up those three and a half points for the Eagles. All right, next, we will get Falcons, Jaguars, Jets, Texans, Chargers, Broncos, Rams, Packers, and Sunday Night Football, Browns, Ravens to finish up the week. What's better than Built Bars? Well, how about new flavors of Built Bars and a Black Friday Built Bar special Friday through Sunday only. 
new limited time flavors, new types of bars, and a winter wonderland of a deal. 20% off now. It's a new promo code, LOCKED20. You want high-end deliciousness at a discount? Well, you've got it this weekend. 20% off anything and everything at Built.com with promo code LOCKED20. And new flavors like Ruby Chocolate Puffs, Lemon Dipped Cheesecake Puffs. You love lemon cheesecake? You'll love Lemon Dipped Cheesecake Puffs. And how about a new bar, Built Crave Bar. A Black Friday weekend isn't complete without the word free. Buy any box of Built Bars through Sunday and get two of their brand new candy bars. Yes, candy bars, Built Crave for free. Built has finally done it. They've come up with a candy bar that is a great alternative to the bar that claims to quote-unquote satisfy. You know what I'm talking about. It's caramel-flavored chocolate loaded with Peanuts, giving it that nutty, chocolatey, so good, sweet candy bar taste, but Crave only has 160 calories with 17 grams of protein. Show me a candy bar that even comes close. 20% off of Built Bars this weekend, plus two free Crave Bars, all at Built.com, plus you can get 60% off Built Broth and Built Boost and 40% off Built Swag. So go to Built.com, enter promo code LOCKED20. How are you feeling about some of these tasty lines on some of the games this Thanksgiving weekend? And you know what it means with Thanksgiving football. It goes hand in hand, right? Football, turkey, and betting. Bet Online has you covered all holiday season, more props, more odds, and more lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this Thanksgiving. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus with promo code locked on. And you will get that bonus. Again, promo code locked on. And it's not just football at Bet Online. They got you covered for pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, even your favorite Vegas casino game. So don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for this 2021 season and future bets beyond 2021. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet Online, we're stuffed with deals this Thanksgiving. I'm not going just to preface this when we meet again Monday and talk about these football games, I will have not watched a lot of Falcons Jaguars. I'm just going to put that out there right now. I'm not excited to turn this one on. Uh, I think the Falcons is also nice for me too. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah let's, <laughs> wow. let's just kind of move past these games. We don't have a lot of time today and I, we're going to talk about them and I'm going to put them on and I'm going to, I'm going to make sure I know what happens in these games and, and, um, probably be watching a lot of in the morning, watching a lot of um, the red zone channel. So I, I, you know, as long as there's some, some points being scored and these teams are in the red zone, then, then I'll see some of those parts and I'll go back and watch uh, snippets of every game and find out what happened in some of these games and make sure I know uh, what the game story was and the big plays and everything as I always do Uh, as the night owl that I am, it's always a lot of fun to do that late Sunday night for me, but, Falcons, Jaguars, yeah, and Jets, Texans, a couple of snoozer games. Hopefully we get just some fun shootouts maybe in these games. But I was thoroughly unimpressed recently from what I've seen from both the Jaguars and the Falcons and, and stock as low as possible on both these teams right now. I feel better about the the quarterback situation, the coach quarterback, and and you know, maybe Ryan to Pitts and and them making a little bit of um something on the road the falcons are favored by two against the jaguars i mean i guess i'll take the falcons because the jaguars look like a poorly coached mess last week and they've had a couple of big wins i know this year but uh, give me the falcons because i'm just it's basically who do you who are you least comfortable with right now and that's the jaguars in this one for me and so two points isn't enough to scare me off the falcons even on the road that that was my thought too it's just let's just say they're the more mature bad team you know, yeah. so you know, I'll give you the two. I trust Matty Ryan not to embarrass themselves and you know beat up on a, a bad team. There, there are some things in Jacksonville that are going okay. You know, defense is okay and their D line's not terrible. And I'm sure Lawrence will make a play or two, but I, I think I'll take the more mature team. Actually, yeah, I like that little classier loss. You know, they yeah. they they get drunk and fall down the stairs drinking wine, whereas the Jaguars with their college head coach is a college environment. They take too many shots and are drinking Jaeger and are throwing out and throwing up in the backyard. And uh, you got, you know, your girlfriend's crying in the middle of the street, carrying her <laughs> shoes. And, you know, that's that's the Jaguars. <laughs> yes. All right. Let's move on to the New York Jets at two and eight at the two and eight Texans. 
oh, those those two wins. were drinking mad dog under the bridge <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a very good although the texans coming off a good one knocking me they out are. of uh the actually the texans knocked us both matt out of the uh the the survivor pool and by the way one team of the three that are left in the survivor pool picked the bears and advanced so we'll see if the other two can match them in week 12 of the three folks that are left uh thanks to run your pool for running this pool for us all season long texans at home they're favored by two and a half i'm picking too many favorites this week but I just like what I've seen from the Texans with Tyrod more recently than than what's going on with the Jets. But maybe with Zach Wilson coming back for the Jets, maybe sitting for a while, did that help him? And is he going to come out one of these weeks and be like, okay, here we go. The rookie figured it out and light somebody up. Maybe this is the week that he does that to the Texans. But right now, recency bias makes me really want to lean to the Texans to win this by a field goal. So two and a half at home. Yeah, give me Houston. Same as me. I, I hope that's what we see from Wilson. You know, he's hitting Elijah Moore for 10 receptions for 150 and making plays and running around and making great off platform throws. I hope that's what we see from Wilson. But I need to see it at least for a week before I would make that bet. Houston, of the four units, Houston's defense is definitely the best of the group. And they're at home. Tyrod is a professional quarterback. You know, I mean, I don't think he'll make a lot of mistakes. So, I'll take the Texans. Exactly. I'm Tyrod had that him. game a few weeks ago where he came back and he threw the three interceptions. And was like, oh, my God. OK, now Tyrod's not even going to help them keep that ship afloat, is he? But then had a really nice game last week. And so that's what I expect. You know, the, when does Zach Wilson become a professional quarterback? He hasn't shown it yet. If he does, give me the Jets. Uh, right now, it's Tyrod and the Texans. Yeah. Chargers, Broncos, an AFC West Match up the six and four Chargers at the five and five Broncos. How do we like this one, Matt? I think I'm ready to jump on the Chargers train that they're figuring things out. And the rookie head coach has a good, firm grasp of his team. And Mike Williams is starting to look better. And Allen and Eckler are awesome. And Herbert's a superstar. But uh, playing in Denver, coming off a bye, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think I'll take the Chargers. Seems like the beginning of the end for Denver. Yeah, I, I really feel yeah. that way. But every time I've felt that way about a team this season, it's some they right. come back with some huge haymaker. And it's like, oh, God, they're back in it. Are the Broncos going to do it? I don't have the confidence that they are. So give me the Chargers. Love the way Justin Herbert was playing. I want to see him use those legs again, man, running around like crazy last week. And uh, that was really fun to see. A familiar opponent. I don't think this hurts them on the road in Denver as much as some other teams, maybe for a home, you know, a, a road environment. So uh, give me the Chargers. Two and a half is not enough to, to move me off of the Chargers, who I, I think are a better football team. Can you stop the run uh, that the Broncos are obviously going to try to establish? Get an early That's my word. And yeah, and, and then the Chargers will be good. But I think the Chargers still, they're a team I believe in. I'm not jumping off. They're going to make a late run into this playoff situation, I think. And they're going to figure out what's going on in defense and get it right. Part of me thinks and kind of hopes this is the Javante Williams breakout party coming off a of bye. The, the the staff says we love Melvin; he's great, but let's let the kid finish out the season and then and they just gash a terrible run defense. I mean, that's I a can, possibility. I could see this being the the week where they say, "Okay, look, Javante Williams, and let's start peppering Jerry Judy with all kinds of targets. Yeah, he's yeah. healthy now, and uh, Tim Patrick's been a nice story and a good player. But let's get the guys that are going to be the stars of the future for this team rolling, and and maybe that is is what the Broncos need for a little shot in the arm. Yeah, I, I think that's a good way of looking at it. And, and frankly, that's how the coaching staff should look at it. Although they might be building something for the next next coaching staff." Right. Yeah. That's always tough. You, you, if, if you're, especially if you might get fired, you want to win as many games as possible right now. It doesn't matter who's in there. Give me all the veterans. Let's veteran this thing out and get a, a, a close win. Yeah. And look, that's just Vic, Vic Fangio style anyway. So. Oh, without question. Rams Packers. This is going to be fun. Uh, let's see the, the Packers at home at eight and three coming off a big loss to the, you know, the Packers in a way are like the Raiders where they've been through a lot this year and they they're have. missing so many pieces. You still have Aaron Rodgers, which is a huge key, but now he's got a bad toe even. like, Can they continue to – I mean, it's pretty amazing what they've been doing, but they lost last week. Are they going to crumble at some point? The Rams at 7-3 coming in, probably mad, have some nice rest. They lost that Monday night football game and then had a bye week. So 
Do they come all guns a blazing with Odell Beckham now there for a few weeks? Rams on the road favored by one point, which is a very interesting line here. Uh, This is a tough one for me to pick because I'm not super confident that the Packers are going to keep this going. But man, at this point, I don't know how you can't vote for Matt LaFleur for coach of the year with what they've already done. And if they continue to do it, I mean, it's just it's it's been pretty amazing what they've done. No, you're 100 percent. I mean, I don't think people look at all the things they've overcome enough and they just keep it going and keep it going. Um, I'm still taking the Rams. Uh, I, I, Ramsey doesn't often travel, but I don't know how he can't in this one against Adams. I mean, and bad toe with some O-line injuries against Aaron Donald sounds like a bad thing to me. Um, I, I think they'll have a better plan and usage for not only Beckham, but Vaughn Miller. And I think the Rams have kind of been a little embarrassed lately. You know, they've been pushed around. They haven't been the more physical team. I think a bye week in this case is good for them. Absolutely. Oh, they're going to be, they're rested and angry. And yeah. Vaughn Miller and Odell Beckham now have had some time to get into the scheme and, and, and watch a lot of film of how they're going to be utilized on offense and defense. And this is a team that got just beat down on Monday night football and, and, and physically beaten too. So they're going to be challenged by the coaching staff. They're going to come out angry. Yeah. I I like the Rams in this one as well. And just too much for the Packers to overcome. They're missing everything and their best player, the guy that really is keeping the whole thing afloat. Aaron Rodgers is hurt with the bad toe. So yeah, Rams one point. Yeah. uh, I'll give up that one point. Browns Ravens. AFC South matchup. You know these two teams well in primetime Sunday night football, the six and five Browns at the seven and three Ravens, Baltimore favored by three and a half at home. I'm assuming not only Lamar will play, but Marquise Brown. I mean, it sounds like that's the way this is trending. Um, I'm assuming Mayfield will play, but he has 800 injuries. And I think the Browns passing game is enough reason to shift to Baltimore at home loud tough environment for sure i'm sure they'll play a lot of man coverage come after baker and you know the browns will try to control the ball on the ground and they might you know i mean that o-line and chubb is a handful to to deal with i just like where the ravens are at better they're finding ways to win did you say three and a half that's what i'm looking at Three and a half. Yeah. I don't like that extra half. I hate that half. Though. The over under is 47. Is this going to be a, an under type of a game? I feel like that's the way this could go, right? That's what I was leaning towards too. And that makes me want to take that half, but I'm going to trust Lamar more than three and a half points. than I trust Baker right now. Give me the Ravens. I, I hate yeah. what's going on with the Browns right now. And I was all about the Browns earlier on in the season, but Baker Mayfield, I just get to the, you get to the, the point where I just don't feel like he's going to lead them anywhere. And the defense is good, but Lamar coming back this week, Marquise Brown, a big play there. Lamar doing Lamar things, even if it's a close game, you know, maybe Baltimore by field goal and you win it, but a half a point, uh, just not enough confidence there. And and if there is a blowout on one side, I feel like it's got to be the Ravens doing their thing at home and handling the Browns. So giving up those three and a half points, give me the Baltimore Ravens, who at this point, I'm as, as confident as any team in the AFC. This game screams, though, at Justin Tucker, 54-yard field goal attempt to win it. And, he, of course, it goes through. The Ravens win with no time on the clock, as they always do this year. And then we lose our bet by yeah. a half. Right. Brown, like, the Ravens win by two. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good stuff. That is week 12. I hope everybody is uh, fat and happy at home and, and, and got to enjoy the Thanksgiving holiday and has a bunch of leftovers and, and hangs out with family and friends and has a good time. And we'll be back Monday as we are. Thanks everybody for making us your first listen every day. And we'll break down everything from week 12 right here. Peacock and Williamson. Nice. Covered a lot of ground. Yeah.